Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. We are going to talk about this new course that I'm planning to showcase to all of those that are interested. Now, this has got no formal name, but it's basically on Python algo trading. In this video, I'm going to show you the course overview and the rationale on why I think this will be very helpful for those, again, that are interested in this topic. Now, the question becomes, who is this for? Usually in my whole community here at quantlabs.net, I've got three categories. I've got retail traders, usually students who are looking for careers to move into industry, and also usually experienced algo traders of, of, of any experience, really. So the first audience is, how does Python affect retail traders? Now, retail traders usually about 90% of them are losing at trading right now. They also use popular, sort of constricting retail trading platforms, including Thinkorswim, TradeStation, MetaTrader, and etc., and a whole slew of others. Also, a lot of them don't know, but they are using corrupted brokers where the brokers want you to lose and be unprofitable. Now, Python for students. You know, usually students are typically going to be graduating and they're usually going to want to be employed at some form of an institution. And most of those are going to use Python. Now, a lot of them will want to move into high frequency trading firms, but widely used in that in those firms are both Python and C++. Now, uh, there are a lot of uh, resources right now that are free that you can go to to learn about Python and algorithmic trading. Other, well, good ones are Quantopia and Quantstart. So the other audience and the big one that we got to deal with are usually algo traders and those that are thinking about using Python or what have you. But usually algo traders are usually the ones that are behind where 80% of all electronic trading all the orders globally are driven by algorithmic trading. Now, the same category of people who are algo traders are pretty well interested in learning all asset classes. Now, usually from my experience, the ones that are most profitable are these type of traders that can, for one simple reason that makes them successful and profitable is that they can scale in parallel that no human can ever do. So, why Python and what are some of the pros? Well, the first one is it's free. Time and time again, I've worked with MATLAB, very expensive and it holds back a lot of people where they can't use it because it's, you know, it's a commercial product. So there's this quote, liberty when it begins to take root is a plant of rapid growth. That pretty well sums it up for Python, open source. Also, big concern that I always have, especially when it comes to live trading with my money, is I care about security. I came across this article and this quote from this person where he says, and this is at, Pi at PayPal, Python has been seeing some of its fastest adoption at PayPal within the application security group. So PayPal security is using Python. That's how secure it can be. Also, Python is excellent for doing quant studies and math analysis. We use it in this manner for HFT. Now, what are some of the basic standard Python packages that you should be using? And what kind of tool set are we involving? Well, from my experience, what held me back from using Python from a few years ago was because I was on Windows and I find Python is really friendly on Linux compliant operating systems and of course includes Mac OS X, which this video is being recorded on. Now the top three uh, packages that are used for not just data science and big data, but specifically for finances, including Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib. Now, some of the tools, again, that are free are PyCharm. And the one that I'm really starting to dig is Anaconda, specifically Spider. And the other thing that makes life a lot easier is pip install, which is a package manager. Now, here's my assumptions that you should know about. In order for you to succeed, you have to have certain traits. First of all, you have to uh, be comfortable 
with all the packages and tools that I've mentioned already, again, they're free, you also have to have access and be confident with computer systems. Most of all, from a personal point of view, in order to really succeed, you have to have inner drive and motivation. Also, you need to have focus and time because I want you to implement all this stuff. That's what obviously makes you successful. Now, it also helps that you have basic elements and a background in trading. Okay, I get this pretty well five times, ten times a week. Questions from newbies. This is what I'm going to do for you folks. Now, the resources to learn programming is I'm going to show you where to go. I've discovered recently on Microsoft Channel 9, there's a 12-hour video for free that will show you basic elements of programming revolving around Python. Of course, there's lots of books. I got those I can give you. Um, there's lots of courses and websites. Again, free. And it's, I could go on and on about it. Now, let's talk about the trading strategies that we're involving here. Now, there's three phases that we're going to attack. The first phase is involving pair trading or arbitrage, the most popular way to make money online or on, on, in, on in trading. The other area that we're going to focus on are algorithms for both options and futures. And lastly, we're going to talk about FX or Forex. So for phase one, which I'm doing right now, I'm putting up videos on my YouTube channel, is arbitrage. And usually the same thing as pair trading. And we're going to focus really on equities, which of course includes indices, ETFs, um, uh, mutual funds if you really want, and of course stocks. And these can be applied to pretty well any region using our free data source, Yahoo Finance. Now for phase two, it's going to get kind of interesting because I'm going to focus on algorithms that you can use for futures and options. Now these are not tough uh, really algorithms. They're very, very basic using a lot of fundamental analysis, which everybody seems to forget about, that covers basic supply and demand. Why do you think oil and commodities right now at this point in January 2016 is in the crapper? It's because of supply and demand. We're going to focus on those kind of algorithms to drive that in both the futures and in the options market. Now phase three, which impacts regardless, you could have world war, whatever, you could have a global depression. This does not affect the FX market. So there's gonna be opportunities still to make money in this asset class. So we're gonna go over all the different conditions on macroeconomic level from different governments, of course, which impacts their currency and that currency can impact other currencies on a global level, which impact how uh, other uh, currencies and governments will, will tweak and manipulate their currency. And there's tons of opportunity in this. Okay, so there's lots to learn here and, 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 and it gets kind of confusing. So I wanna introduce you to the structure that I will use in these courses, set of courses moving forward. So of course we're talking about things like bridges, dams, very important on how you can use your brain to apply what you're gonna learn. First of all, I like to break things up into modules. Okay, I have already currently do that with my current courses online. Everything's broken up into modules then which are divided into units. No different than ounces, quarts, pints, cups, whatever. That's how we learn in small bite-sized chunks. Now, before we get started on the trading strategies I just mentioned, we need to understand a few things. First, I think it's really important as before we get into introduction of the course, we need to understand my five-year journey. I've spent a lot of time and probably I could say I wasted a lot of time. Who knows, who cares? But what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the assessment of the different programming languages. Now of all the languages, and I've been doing this for 30 plus years, so I'm not a puppy at this or a spring chicken. I've done a lot of programming in my time. So I know what languages for what reasons, specifically when it comes to trading, algorithmic trading, I'm gonna obviously focus a lot in Python. I'm going to have a whole session on that in detail on why I think Python is really important. All right, so not only that, but I think it's really important to understand that we do modules on infrastructure. This is the difference between using cloud solutions like Quantopian and maybe even QuantConnect. We focus on infrastructure that you control 
and that you own. As I mentioned earlier, I just put up a video and I just learned about the NSA. When you put your software and your, specifically your live trading account, which involves your money, you are now introducing new risks into your network, into your as in, in, into your assets, if you want to call it that, and infrastructure, you're introducing new risks that are dependent on how your choice, how your firm, who you pick as cloud uh, access with, with privileges and whatnot. How do you know that those servers are locked down? They're probably not, and you may think they are because they're publicly exposed on the internet. So that's why I'm going to be focusing a lot on this about infrastructure, which nobody else does, including the trading aspect as well. So let's let, let me introduce that to you. First, let's talk about databases. I've studied database after database after database, commercial ones, all the expensive ones, and all the open source ones. But the ones, the two ones that I'm, I'm really wanting to focus on that I'm actually going to implement with my live trading system are no SQL. I'm going to talk about that, but I'm not going to talk about it here. But the ones we're going to talk about is MongoDB, which we can use for disk storage. And you can use it like a typical relationship database. On top of that, we're going to also talk about another module on Redis, specifically the in-memory component. And we're going to use that for speed very fast. It's ranked as one of the fastest databases in the world. And, of course, we're going to also focus on differences as well. The other thing that we need to understand is capital, your capital, your capital that you save. And it gets even worse when you start managing other people's money because if you mess up, you're on the hook, and it's your liability, which means you can get taken to court over it. So... Your broker account is very important. I mentioned it before. Interactive brokers. All the other brokers are pretty well corrupt and they want you to lose. Interactive brokers is not like that. There's many API options that they offer. So we're going to cover that. And I'm going to show you some coding demos that I'm going to use to be able to take my system and connect it into interactive brokers. And of course, the one other good thing about interactive brokers, it covers all major or all asset classes, all of them. Okay, so we'll cover that as well. Now, a couple of things about charting. I'm a believer in visual. I know some other people that don't care about visualization. I do. It tells a story. It tells a story of the past. So we're going to focus on the packages that you can use and options for Python charting. Obviously, Matplotlib is the big one. But another one that a lot of people don't really know about is PyQt Graph. This package is awesome. It's fast and it's really, really modern. And it, I mean, I could go on about it, but we'll talk about it in one of these sessions. Now, the other big thing that I'm really discovering about Python is it's a great front-end designer. So you can now design GUIs or graphical user interfaces. One of the tools that you can use is Qt Designer. And the other one is using PyQt Graphs. We'll do a whole session around that. Nothing too heavy, but I'll show you on the simple things that you can do with Qt Designer. And obviously with these kind of tools, it works similar to... to uh, Visual Studio, but it's free. All the things that I've already mentioned are free, okay? Now, why am I doing this? What's it for? What I want you to do is to come to each and every session, okay? Really important because then you can take advantage of my live question and answer periods. We're going to have videos on this for each topic. And guess what? If you miss out, we're going to still have videos recorded from those sessions. So if you miss out, you can still learn and take advantage of it, okay? Now, here's the big, big awesome part about this whole thing. I've got scripts galore posted on my membership. Key here is I'm gonna give you all my source code, okay? Not only that, but I'm gonna give you the walkthroughs as well to help you, mentor you to get and take advantage of all the source code that you get. Now, here's the question. How do we do it? What's the schedule? Obviously, I'm leveraging the power of a website called meetup.com. All right, so here's what you do. Make sure you join this group, quant-finance. I've been running this since day one for five years. Again, meetup.com slash quant-finance. 
all my events, all my courses, everything will get listed there. Now, if that's not enough, you can join my email group where I'll announce everything as I move forward in my email newsletter. Just come to here at quantlabs.net slash membership.html. Okay, so what do you do? Obviously, you join, and you join now because you want to get in before the first uh, session starts, and it's live. That's what we're gearing this towards, and I want you to take full advantage of it, okay? So if you're really, really serious, just come over to quantlabs.net slash mkt slash quantelite, and that's it. You're in, and come out to each and every session. I hope to see you online, and see you soon. I hope you get profitable real fast.